All right. And here we go. Action. Hello, and welcome to Introduction to Bioinformatics Analysis, a course taught by Philip Richmond. This is section 1-3b, Exploring Linux and Unix. Quick forward for this presentation. Do not start this section until you've watched section 1-3a. Also, I highly recommend having the cheat sheet out for this section, as I won't be walking through the basic commands as much as I did in the previous lecture. Quick start instructions. Uh, go ahead and open your terminal and log in to the Westgrid Orsinus server. So I'll do that now. Now I'm logged in. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing we want to do is set up our sandbox. Now when I say sandbox, I'm talking about an area where we can uh, essentially play around and practice a few different commands without stepping on other people's toes, deleting other people's files, having naming issues. It's good to have uh, a, a directory like this. So we are going to make this in the uh, Global Scratch Wine Research Center directory. So go ahead and first let's change into that directory. Global Scratch Wine Research Center. And whenever you change into a directory, it's good to see what is in that directory. So you can see uh, at this point in time there are primarily just a few different directories that I've created um, within here, including uh, one of these directories which we will be adding to later. So go ahead and make your own directory uh, titled your last name. So we can do this. You can make it all caps if you want. I made it all caps because I already have uh, a directory here. And again, remember that the capitalization matters. So these are two different directories despite having uh, the same uh, names. So why don't we go ahead and get some files. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this file into our sandbox directory from global scratch wrc genomes, and then this long bit, and that long bit, and again, remember tab complete is going to be your friend here. So what we're going to do, we're going to use full file path. So copy from slash global scratch wrc genomes, and if I just type s and then I hit tab, that's almost all the way complete. If I hit tab again, I can see that I want this r64. <clears throat> R64. And then if I just hit tab right now a few times, it's going to show me everything that's in this directory. And the one that I want you to grab is s288c underscore reference underscore sequence underscore R64. So s288c, oh, I just typed s and hit tab, and that was the only file within this directory that started with s. And you can see that. Um, these are all the files in the directory. This is the only one that starts with a capital S, so that worked out perfectly for me. And I want to copy that. Again, we're going to use full file path here. Copy that to slash global scratch wrc and then my sandbox directory. And just like that, you can see that uh, obviously nothing was printed to the screen, but this command was executed without any errors. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. So remember, if you type clear, it gets you a nice, fresh uh, terminal page. However, if you want to scroll back up, that you can do that with the mouse, or over here on the right-hand side, you can click and grab with this. So now we have this file. Oh, it says we also want to get this same file from the directory. Instead of retyping everything, I could just hit up twice to scroll through my previous commands, 
and I don't want to change where the file is going, so I can leave that. The only thing I want to change is instead of grabbing this file from that directory, I instead want to grab the one that starts with a lowercase s. So again, s tab, that's the file, and done. So we can check to make sure that these files actually made it by going into my sandbox and typing ls, and there they both are. So playing around a little bit, these files are quite long in name, uh, and that is going to be important because it has information about the version and the date that the genome was created, but just for playing around today to make the commands easier, we are just going to rename these to simply s288c.fsa and s288c.gff. So I'm going to do that here mv the fsa to s288c.fsa and mv the gff to s288c.gff and you can see now if we type ls these files are going to be much easier to type in. If we want to look at the first few lines of each file we can do that using the head command. So if we type head, H-E-A-D, and then the name of the file, let's first look at s288c.fsa. Then what it's going to do is it's going to print out, by default, the first 10 lines of that file. We can change how many lines it prints out using the dash n uh, option. Again, if we wanted to find this dash n option or understand it more, we could type man head, and if we do this, right there, dash n, print out the first k lines instead of the first 10. So this is going to be our option, and quite funny, if you Google man head, you get a lot of weird things, but this is the first image on Google Images. thought it was kind of odd. Anyways, we'll type head dash n 50 on s288c.fsa and this time instead of just 10 lines it printed 50 lines to the screen. Let's take a look at the other file but this time let's take a look at the bottom of the file using the tail command. So tail just like head looks at the first 10 lines of the file from the top tail will look at the last 10 lines of the file from the bottom. So we can take a look at the other file with tail, s288c.gff. And it looks like there is some sequence down at the bottom of that file. If we type tail-n100, s288c.gff, there's a lot of sequence down at the bottom of this file. So let's explore these files a little bit more. Uh, starting with the s288c.fsa. So this is what we call the FASTA or FASTA format. You will see this file suffix, meaning whatever comes after the period, the last few characters. These could be like .pdf or .txt or .tsv. In Linux, these are pretty arbitrary. However, it's good practice to use the correct suffix based on the file type. But unlike Mac and Windows, these are not necessary and they do not tell the computer much about what file type it is. That's more for your own documentation purposes, which is why there are so many different options. Um, and I guess you can be FA or FA. Don't know why I did that. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. And this time, let's take a look at the file using more. So let's do more s288c.fsa. And one of the things that you see is that we have this greater than character followed by some name here and then some other things in brackets. So generally, this is 
um, representative of all FASTA formats, where you have some kind of uh, a, a greater than delimiter followed by the sequence identifier and other information, and then the actual sequence itself. So again, this is telling us that this uh, identifier is chromosome 1, uh, the strain is S288C, this is genomic DNA, and the organism is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So we can use the grep command or grab regular expressions uh, on this file and if we use this grep command which is very important and very useful what it will do is it will pull out all instances of a given string within a file so what that means is if we type grep and then in quotation marks greater than on our file what it's going to be printing out is every time every line that has one of these characters in it. So why don't we clear our screen and we can type grep greater than s288c.fsa and you can see as it prints out every line that has one of these characters on it. So we can go, it looks like we have chromosome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way through to the mitochondria. The quotes are necessary. So if I was to instead not have these quotes, then what would happen, and I'm not going to do this, is I would overwrite this file because this delimiter, this greater than, translates to write the standard out to this file. So if I did grep with nothing, it would write nothing to that file, and then that file would be uh, overwritten. So we do not want to do that. We're going to delete that. We can use the manual to identify the add-on or the option to get additional lines printed. And so, again, it's very good practice to get used to using the man command. So man grep. And there are lots of different options for grep. Um, I will go ahead and just show you the one that we're looking for is all the way down here. right? And they're in different categories. So we want print number of lines after the matching line. So this is going to give us, uh, I want the next four lines after uh, that character. So I can type grep-a4 on my greater than s288c.fsa. And now, instead of just giving me the different headers, I get the headers plus four lines of sequence. Why don't we save this grep into a file called s288c chromosome ids.txt. So now if we do ls, we can see we have this new file. Also, something that's useful for the mouse is that sometimes if you double click, then depending on your mouse settings and what it will do is it will copy that uh, or it will select a single word and then we can control command C, command V. Again this is for a Mac. So again this is just practicing that sometimes when we enter a command we want to save what prints to the screen inside a file. And so that's what I've done here. So now let's take a look at our annotation file or the GFF file. So I'm going to type clear, get a nice clean screen. I don't remember what it's called, so I can type ls, and we can take a look at it, more s288c.gff. 
So at the top here we have a bit of information and then as we scroll down you can see this is a tab delimited format and I'm going to expand this a little bit so when you're using the more command and you expand your window you can see that it doesn't actually expand what's already been shown but if I start to scroll down then the next lines will be expanded so this is a good example of something that we can look at this is the tab separated format for a GFF file or a gene general generic feature format I believe so we have the chromosome um, some information about who where it was generated the type of annotation it is, so this is a CDS or a coding sequence, the chromosomal coordinate at which it starts, the coordinate at which it stops, uh, the score which we are not actually using uh, for the GFF format, the strand that this gene is on, so you can see this is on the minus strand, the crick strand, um, this is the frame which we can talk a little bit more uh, later and then lastly the attribute and so this is where we have lots of information generally separated by uh, these semicolons so this is a going to be sometimes a very long uh, string you can see this one is quite long and it's telling you about the uh, protein YAL086C um, which is the gene POW8 um, and so this is a, a good line that can really uh, be useful for storing information about a feature. So why don't we clear the screen again and remember to get out of more it's just type Q. So why don't we grab all the genes using grep so we can do this by using grep on the word gene from our file. So why don't we type grep gene from s288c.gff. And whoa, all of a sudden everything is printing to the screen. So again, if something is printing to the screen and we want to capture it, we can capture it using greater than capture the standard out so again instead of retyping I can just type up on the deep up on the uh, arrows greater than we'll call this s288c genes.gff so now if we type ls we've added a new file we can take a look at this file and you can see now this is where we have the genes, um, things that are annotated as gene. We can count to see how many genes there are in this file using the word count command. So word count or WC will give us information about a given file. So why don't we type clear ls to make sure that we have the file still. Yep, there it is. So we can do a word count on that file and when we type that three things are going to be printed out. The number of lines in the file, the number of words in the file, and the number of characters in the file. If we type man wc we can learn more. Next we're going to make a simple bed file for all the genes. One of the big things that we'll learn about in the file format section is that almost everything in genomics analysis is tab separated or comma separated. So the handling of columns is very necessary to easily convert between file formats. So we're going to convert from this complex GFF format to a bare bones bed format which is one of the most widely used formats. And the only necessary things for a bed format are chromosome, start, and stop. So when I show this backslash t character, that means the tab delimiter. So 
we are going to grab individual columns using the cut command. And we can specify those columns using the dash F and then the column number. So we can learn more about the cut command using man cut, if you like. Or we can just use uh, the command cut dash F. We want, well, I don't even remember which columns we want. So why don't we take uh, a look at our file. So we want columns chromosome, start, and stop. So that's columns 1, 4, and 5. Again, we can clear the screen, so we've got a nice bit to work with. And cut dash F1, comma, two, 4, comma, 5 of our file, s288c genes.gff, and we'll capture this in s288c genes.bed. So we can see if we were effective with our cut command, and this time we're going to use less. Again, the difference between less and more really comes down to a matter of preference. Some people prefer less, some people prefer more. I think the people who wrote these commands in Linux had a bit of a sense of humor. So it looks like we were successful. We have chromosome, start, and stop position. Again, to get out of less, you can just hit Q. So permissions. Permissions designate who, whether it's the user, group, or world, can read, write, and execute a file. So let's say you wanted someone else to be able to use this file that you've created. You need to take steps to change the permissions on this bed file so that someone else can read, write, or execute it. For most files, we won't ever execute them. That's really only for programs uh, or Python or Perl scripts. But controlling how other users can see or edit your files is very important. So we can change permissions using the change permissions command or chmod. The way the chmod command works is pretty complicated. Uh, if you get confused, the Google, Google is a great resource or you can uh, take a look at the man page for chmod, but in general what we're going to want to do, uh, I will just give you a command here, is we're going to type chmod and then user, group, and world, we want to give them read, write, and execute privileges. So again, breaking that down, u, user, g, group, o, world, and then on the other side of that, after following the equal sign, we want them to be able to read, write, and execute. So if we type ls-l now, we can see that this s288c genes.bed file has for the user read and write privileges, but no execute privileges. For the group, it only has reading privileges, but no writing and no executing. And for the world, it has no ability to read, no ability to write, and no ability to execute. So once we change this using the chmod command, a couple things are going to change. One, we're going to see the color of this change, and two, we're going to see the permissions over on this side change. So chmod user group world read, write, execute for s288c genes.bed. So now if we type ls-l again, we can see that the user, group, and world all have read, write, and execute, and we can also see that the color of the file has changed. We can also change permissions on a directory, but 
let's say we only wanted the user to have read, write, and execute on our sandbox directory, and we want the group and the world to just be able to read. So the way we specify that is let's use the full file path here. So we'll do chmod user equals read, write, execute, comma, group and world equals read space the full file path. So we're going to slash global. So remember, it doesn't matter where you are. If you use full file path, then it will always know exactly what directory or file you are referring to. Slash go global scratch WRC Richmond. So now if we type ls-l doesn't really look like anything's changed because the current directory is not being listed here. So if we back up one and do an ls-l we can now see that the Richmond directory has those permissions that I mentioned, whereas the other directories have different permissions. If you wanted to play around with that a little bit more, we could just scroll back up. And instead, this time, we could make our directory the same for user, group, and world. And if we do this, voila, you can see that now we have full permissions. And when a directory has full permissions, it turns this uh, different color. So one way to determine the permission state of a file or directory is by the color. But the more useful way is to look at the uh, ls-l, this first column that's going to give you the most information. Again, interpreting these lines, um, this is just a slide describing that, which I just walked through. OK, and then lastly, when projects get really big, we need a way to check space availability. So the two primary commands to find out how much disk space you have available uh, are disk usage command, so this is du, and this is going to be based on a uh, single local directory. So if we type du and then let's specify slash global scratch wrc, it will tell me how much, how essentially how big this entire directory is, how much space it takes up in total. We can add another option, du-hs. You can look up what these options mean, but briefly it says the dash h is for human readable, so instead of being this uh, many bytes, it is this many megabytes. And additionally, instead of being um, just the single directory, the S will accumulate. So instead of having to add all these up, it is just the accumulation of those. Other things to play with on your own. I'm running out of time on this video and I don't want to make them too long. Uh, paste can be used to paste columns together in a tab separated format and find will uh, allow you to find a given file so way find works is we type find the starting point where we want to start looking for a file um, usually you don't want this to be all the way back at the root because it'll have to search the entire file system but if your starting point if you have some but you don't know exactly where it is then you can give it a starting point that's somewhat relative, so we'll do find server doesn't seem to be happy with me right now ba -ba -ba -ba. well you can try this on your own that's all for, nope, there we are, it responded find 
from slash global scratch wrc a file with the dash name s288c genes.gff and you can see that it went through starting at these and going into every single nested directory and it found these files in two locations so this way I will be able to track who is following along and who is not so hopefully you're following along and entering the commands if not well uh, then if you are picking it up easily you should be fine there will be a quiz before you can move on to the next week uh, of videos so keep that in mind these commands as well as the commands that I've linked for another tutorial are very important and you should be very comfortable by the end of this first week with all of the Linux operations that I have presented. That's all for this presentation and goodbye.